Homesteading, what is it? How can it help you? There are a couple of benefits there, and we're about to find out from attorney Ned Hale what they are next. From the studios of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association in Fort Myers, Florida, this is the Royal Palmcast, the show about people and things that realtors, home buyers, and home sellers care about. And now, here's your host, Jim Sanville. Hello and welcome to the Royal Palmcast. I'm Jim Sanville, and we are coming to you from the production studios of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association in beautiful, sunny Fort Myers, Florida. Today I'm here with Jerry Johnson, our producer extraordinaire, and a special guest we will introduce in just a moment. Jerry, how's things in your world? It's excellent. I'm having the best day. Really entertaining and educational with Mr. I'm going to leave the guest name as a surprise so you can Ooh, that's you a can good introduce tease. him. That's a good tease. That's I, right. I can feel the downloads coming right now. <laughs> that's right. People got to know. They got to tell know. your friends. No, this is, this is really a good guest. We uh, have had him on a couple of times before. We talked uh, previously about wire fraud and other kinds of fraud in a couple of episodes. So look those up if uh, you are so inclined. And if you're a realtor, you ought to be inclined because Ned had some great Uh, tips and warnings about what to avoid and how to extricate yourself from difficult situations that you can get into because a lot of bad guys out there a lot of bad guys ned is an attorney as i mentioned here in in fort myers he is with the law firm of hale law services he is the owner and uh, he has offices in fort myers estero and sanibel those are beautiful places every single one the end. Uh, he's also a board-certified real estate uh, attorney uh, under the Florida Bar and the Florida Bar Section member. He does real property, probate, trust law, business law, elder law, busy, busy lawyer. So we're very pleased to have him. Ned, welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate coming back, Jim. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed your last uh, your last foray into our studios. I did. I. Uh found myself uh, i was able to overcome my shyness it was remarkable you you just put me at ease we're blown away by how you've come out of your shell because uh, you know that's that's your reputation you're a shrinking violet at times right <laughs> i am not so much not so much ned knows how to get the word out there he's a great communicator so we are thrilled to have him ned uh, just to refresh the folks memory uh, tell me a little bit about your background where you're from where you went to school that sort of thing i'm originally from a suburb of la and uh, i grew up out there my parents are actually from atlanta the atlanta area moved out to la because what california dream is a subset of the american dream they knew nobody out in California and uh, grew up out there, went to college and law school in Chicago because I wanted to try something new and get a little cold and get a little wind. And then I wandered my way down here at the latter part of law school following somebody down and I didn't know anybody here. And I said, well, I didn't have a job in Chicago, so I might as well go to Florida where it's warm and the air is clean and not have a job there. Mm-hmm. You went to school where? Right in the Loop in that area? I Chicago? did. Yeah. I did. Downtown yeah. Chicago. Did you ever go to the Billy Goat Tavern? I did in college, you bet. Yeah. yeah. I went to the Billy Goat. Been there a couple of times. Yeah. No, no Coke co- Pepsi. No Coke Pepsi. <laughs> no cheap. No fried cheap. No, cheap. no, no Coke Pepsi. Oh, it's sad. a lot of fun. Chicago has so much character. I miss it every day. Uh, but as everybody says, great city, awful weather. No, I'm sure you're a baseball <laughs> fan. South side, north side. Are you a Cubs guy? I am absolutely a Sox guy. Sox guy. <laughs> wow. Okay. I live very close to the stadium in Bridgeport, and that's near the, near the Sox stadium okay. in Comiskey. I'm a Sox guy, too, but another color. But they, <laughs> the Red Sox, my team, from, I'm from New England, mm-hmm. they play here in Fort Myers, which to me was a big draw. Except this year, not so much. You're not the only one. We got a, we're getting a lot more Bostonians down here, mm-hmm. a whole lot more. And I think the Sox have something to do with it. Yeah, I, I formerly lived in Lakeland for a couple of mm-hmm. years where the Tigers play, and a lot of people from Michigan there. Mm-hmm. Big, big draw. So baseball is cool. We miss it during these COVID times, and uh, hopefully we'll get back to normal at some point soon. So, Ned, today we want to focus on a very interesting topic, uh, interesting to me anyway, because I, I just – I hear this term a lot, but I have no idea what it means. Homestead, homesteading. Talk about what that is and 
where it comes from and what it means. You know, when I first heard the word homestead, that's not the term they use in California. They say primary residence. I thought about homesteading in Oklahoma. Remember that? All the homesteading historically that was done in Oklahoma. In Florida, it kind of has a different meaning. It really is personal residence. You can declare a property as your homestead. And it's such a fascinating subject because it's so powerful and so useful. And I believe one of the many reasons that we are getting more and more residents here in Florida, people moving from other states. The important thing to understand about homestead is the benefits for it are listed in the Florida Constitution. All right. A lot of people don't know that, but. It's a much tougher to overturn the Florida Constitution than it is some statute somewhere. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty rock solid. The three main homestead benefits are three different areas. What does that mean? Number one, you get a reduction in your real estate taxes, and we'll talk about that. Number two, you have asset protection on your homestead where someone can't come and take it. Number three is there are certain restraints and requirements on devise. In other words, who can you bequeath your homestead to? There are certain rules for homestead versus a regular piece of property. Today, Jim, we're going to talk about the first two, tax benefits and asset protection benefits. What are the tax benefits? Well, you know what they are. If you have a Florida homestead, your primary residence, you get a tax deduction off the top for $25,000, just like deduction on your income taxes. They take the assessed value of your homestead, not the not necessarily the market value, the assessed value, and they knock 25 grand off the value for all taxes and then another 25 grand off for everything except school. So it's not really 50,000 off the top. It's 25 off the top for everything. The second 25,000 is including all taxes except school taxes. Okay? And this is this is not just for people who have multiple homes, multiple states. It's it's for residents who live here full time. Well, we'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into that. So it's a tax benefit. The other tax benefit is what they call Save Our Homes is on your homestead, your real estate taxes cannot go up more than 3% per year. So regardless of if the value increases, the other tax benefit is on a homestead, your taxes can't go up more than 3% per year so that people who've lived here a long time and maybe the property's gone way up in value, they don't get taxed out of their home. So those are two major, major benefits for homestead is saving in real estate taxes. Um, What else do we have to talk about? The next factor is how do you qualify for homestead? Because we're going to get to asset protection in a minute. All right. How do you qualify for homestead protection? So let me ask you, Jim, if you have a let's say you're applying for Florida homestead. You live here, right? What if you own property elsewhere? Jim, do you know how long you have to live in your Florida homestead in order to claim the homestead benefit? Well, I'd always assume six months in a day. Is that correct? Not necessarily, no. In fact, there's not technically a requirement, not technically a time requirement that you spend in your Florida homestead. A lot of people don't know that. And I heard that from Ken Wilkinson himself, the Lee County property appraiser who wrote the homestead laws in the 80s and 90s. What does that mean? What does he what what are the what are the rules in terms of residency? It's not necessarily any number of nights. Here's the key thing. The key thing is in order to have your Florida homestead, you have to have and they and the, you have to sh- you know show these documents by the way when you apply for it. You know what they are? Florida driver's license. Register to vote in Florida, right? You and your spouse. Those are the two main ones. You have to have an intent to register, but nobody checks how many days because they don't care very much. Here's the key thing. Number one, it can't be a rental. Obviously, if you live there, you're not renting it. I don't recommend renting your homestead at all, ever. There are those who say the the state tends to look the other way if you rent your homestead for maybe 30 days or less. I don't recommend renting it at all. When I say renting it at all, that doesn't mean you can't rent out rooms. A case just came out on that. It's a heavily litigated issue, and there's lots of interesting case law on it. So an Airbnb, for example. An Airbnb. 
there they that's called homestead fraud if you rent out your homestead for any period of time they have gone back and reassessed taxes the most famous example around here was a couple was homesteading their 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 this beautiful house on the water and yet they were advertising online to have weddings there and wedding receptions there okay they got burned okay they weren't excuse me, really living there. Again, I've been told that the state will generally look the other way if you rent your homestead for 30 days or less per year, but I don't recommend renting it at all, okay? If you're living there, why do you need to rent it? It creates some exposure for you. <laughs> but you're living there. Right. It's, it, right. You shouldn't have to rent it. Where, where are you gonna go? So a duplex, how would that work? Well, if it's a separate strap number, Okay, if the duplex usually is not a separate strap number, it's one strap number. What do you mean by strap number? I'm not. Uh, tax ID number. Oh, okay. Tax ID number. So if it's one tax ID number, generally you will be entitled to the homestead exemption for only the half mm-hmm. where you live and not for the other half. So in other words, kind of a half homestead exemption. But the key thing is, and what Mr. Wilkinson has said, and what the documents say is that ne- the key litmus test, besides not renting it, is that you're not getting a homestead or primary residence benefit in any other state. That's the key. Neither you nor your spouse. Mm -hmm. So if either you or your spouse are getting some sort of a primary residence benefit in another state, then you're not entitled to Florida homestead. It knocks both of you out. Now, how about another country? Another country, they say the same thing. But that's much tougher for them to prove. I'm not saying do it, but that technically the law is anywhere. And I don't even do other countries even have homestead benefits. I'm not aware of any. So the point is, is you can't neither you nor your spouse can get a tax benefit, a homestead benefit in any other state. And what having being a Florida resident is great. The main reason people want to be a Florida resident, beside the next reason we're going to talk about, which is asset protection, no state income tax. So I know people who might even own a business in a high-tax state, but they Florida homestead, they file their taxes, their federal taxes, right? Because we don't have a state income tax return here. They file their federal taxes out of here. Now, some of those northeastern states will meddle a little bit because they're wise to this. I'm telling you that's between those folks and their high-tax state accountants. Florida, as long as you don't homestead anywhere else, you can call it your homestead. Your car has to have a Florida tag. Mm-hmm. Got to register to vote. Drive Florida, drive all those sorts of But you can't, neither you nor your spouse can get a homestead benefit or similar type of primary residence benefit in another state. I come from a high-tax state in the Northeast, and I've been here for five years. And uh, I did purposely did not work in that state after January 1st of the year I left. I left in mid-January came, and came here. Purposely didn't work there and lived there for two weeks. Well, two years later, fast forward, guess what? That state's tax department says you owe us income tax for the money you made in Florida entirely that year. I said, I technically, I'm not an accountant or an attorney, but I don't think so. And uh, it took me two years to prove that I lived here by sending them leases and notes from my dentist to say, yes, he established with a, it was a nightmare. I hear horror stories like that every day. And all that does is get people angrier when those high tech states do those sorts of things and keep people moving here. And that's, it's not just our weather, it's our low taxes here that, that, that keep people moving here. So, so. That's a key benefit is real estate, reduced real estate taxes, right? And your taxes can't go up more than 3% per year. Interestingly enough, I said neither you nor your spouse can get a real estate tax benefit. You can own real estate in another state. You just can't get a primary residence tax benefit. What about unmarried couples? Well, there's no such thing as uh, unmarried couples have no legal standing as a couple, your boyfriend and girlfriend, your girlfriend and girlfriend, uh, you know, your, 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 your husband and husband, whatever, or you're not. So if you're not married, one of you can have a homestead benefit in another state, right? And then the other can be the only one on title here. So the other thing is interesting, too. Well, what about if you have mom and, mom and dad, right, own a piece of property, and then for estate planning purposes, their son or daughter is, is also on title? What if the son or daughter doesn't live there? Well, usually you're entitled to what? 
half homestead benefit because the husband and wife are looked at as one unit. But, you know, again, there's all sorts of iterations. There's all sorts of different arrangements for different ways people might take title and that sort of thing. And that's between, you know, the taxpayer, the homeowner, and uh, and, and, and the county. That's number one. Do you want to hear about the other key benefit? I would love to, but we need to take a quick break here, Ned. Uh, I would love for you to save that, and uh, that'll keep a few listeners with us, too, because this is really good stuff, folks. Listen up. Tell your friends. If you're you're a realtor, home buyer, home seller, you need to hear this podcast. This is gold. Ned Hale, we appreciate your being here. We're going to come right back after this very important message. Hi, this is Jerry Johnson, and you're listening to the Royal Palmcast. Hi, I'm Andrea Dillon, and you're listening to the Royal Palmcast. I'm Bill Steinke, and you're listening to the Royal Palmcast. Are you a realtor in the Fort Myers, Florida area, or thinking of becoming one? If so, you should know that the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association is here to support you. Sure, we offer access to the multiple listing service, but that's just the beginning. We also offer certification classes, exclusive online tools, and a peer network of over 7,000 local realtors and business partners. We also operate a realtor store with signage, lockboxes, maps, and other realtor essentials at our locations in Fort Myers, South Fort Myers, and Cape Coral. Our advocacy arm, RBAC, works to make sure your voice is heard in Washington, Tallahassee, and at the local level. We speak out on issues important to the real estate industry, like water quality, private property rights, and tax matters. Realtors from throughout Lee County, Florida, and beyond count on the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association to help keep them at the top of their game. If you're a realtor or an aspiring realtor in the Fort Myers area, you'll want to take advantage of all we have to offer. Contact us today. You can start by visiting our website, rpcra.org, or by following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. The Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association is here for you. We hope you're enjoying the Royal Palm Cast, a production of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association, your association for realtor services, resources, and education. We are committed to the success of all of our members and advocate for property rights, both residential and commercial, as we continue our efforts in participating and influencing public policy on local, state, and national levels. Your association also leads the way with community involvement, member engagement, promoting the use of local, state, and national benefits, and more, all of which helps provide a superior Realtor experience. The staff of RPCRA is here for you. Visit our website at rpcra.org and make sure to find us on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media for valuable information on upcoming classes and events. Welcome back. You're listening to the Royal Palmcast. I'm your host, Jim Sandville, along with Jerry Johnson. We are coming to you from the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association in Fort Myers, Florida. I want to get right back to our guest. Uh, The gentleman sitting across from me is Ned Hale, an attorney here in Fort Myers, specializes in real estate and other matters. And he's a longtime uh, instructor here at our classes, well-known around the association, very respected local attorney, and he knows his stuff. So if you're a realtor, home buyer, home seller, listen up. You're going to get some some good uh, insights from our guest today. Ned, we were talking about uh, some uh, asset protection qualities of of homesteading, and you were about to reveal the number two uh, item that uh, way way you can – gain some asset protection. Please tell us. Yeah, before I get into that, let me just quickly state a couple more things about the tax benefit. Number one, you have to have owned the property on January 1st, on or before January 1st of the year you're applying. So that's why there's so many closings in December, because people want to close so they can get their homestead benefit. Number one, you have to apply for homestead then by March 1st of that year. It automatically re-ups once you've applied, so you only have to apply once if you stay in the same house. Um, And then the other thing is they voted in portability a few years ago where you can sell one homestead and port some of that move, some of that benefit into a new homestead. Sounds complicated. There are there are very interesting uh, graphs on uh, graphics online where you can find that. So that's that asset protection, probably a bigger benefit even than taxes though it, it, it applies to fewer people because most people don't go around getting lawsuits against them most of us do live in a house 
but I'm telling you it can be a huge benefit. What is that benefit? Here's the deal. According to the Florida Constitution, your homestead is completely protected from outside creditors. Who's an outside creditor? It could be anybody who sues you and gets a judgment against you and say you owe them money. It could be anybody. You're in a car wreck. You get sued. Your insurance doesn't cover it. Somebody's got a money judgment against you. It could be anything. That doesn't attach to your homestead. Unlimited value, so it can, doesn't matter how big the judgment is, It will. they cannot seize your homestead as long as your homestead is unlimited value in both instances. If you're in an unincorporated area, not a municipality, not in a city limit, up to 160 acres protected. Most of us, our homestead is on less than 160 acres. So if you are not in a municipality, I live in South Fort Myers, Summerlin and Gladiolus. That is unincorporated Lee County. I am not in the city of Fort Myers, okay? People don't understand where the Fort Myers city limit ends is basically just south of Colonial. And the rest is unincorporated until you get down to Estero. A lot of people don't realize oh, no. these things. Yeah. So that's the other, and that's one thing. So that that's, that, that's a really, really big deal that it's, 160 acres outside a municipality, unlimited value. If you're in a municipality, Cape Coral is almost all the city of Cape Coral. Fort Myers, north of Colonial to the river, that's all city. You're protected much less, only within, only up to a half acre. So as long as your homestead, unlimited value still, but as long as your homestead is on a half acre or less, which mine happens to be anyway, so it wouldn't matter, most of us are, uh, then you still get full homestead benefit. An outside creditor cannot take it. That's a big deal, okay, because it means in Florida your home is your castle. No one can take that away unless, of course, think about it. Obviously, if you affirmatively mortgage your homestead and then don't pay, they can take it. If you have a private lien where you have literally signed something saying, if I don't pay you, you can take my homestead, then they can take it. If there's a mechanics lien by statute, if a, uh, a repairman does some, you know, a contractor does work on your house, he can lien your house. So there are exceptions, but in general, it's a great asset protection device. I've said for a long time, a lot of these mansions that you see that are waterfront or whatever, you don't see people there very often. A lot of times those people are homesteading here as a great place to put their money so that they know that it can't be taken by an outside creditor. And I can tell you a great an interesting case that came out a long t- about 20 years ago if we if we have time. Please I don't know do. Yeah, we we'd love to hear. Here's how strong the Florida homestead laws are when it comes to asset protection. Get this. True story. Came out in, I don't know, it's called the Havoco case. Any real estate lawyer knows about it. Pushing 20 years ago now. Get this. A guy is in Tennessee, a fat cat, gets a $15 million judgment against him, something around there. Three days after the judgment was against him, he moves to Florida he invests, I don't know, $10 million in a Florida mansion homestead, right? Then he says, okay, guess what? Then he declares bankruptcy, all right? And the creditor says, wait a minute, you can't do that. You hid your money. You took your money with a specific intent to defraud us, and you hid it into a Florida homestead. Now, Because of that case, they changed the bankruptcy laws slightly, which, again, are federal. And now the law is he couldn't do that today and declare bankruptcy. Now there's a 30-month requirement for Florida residency to be able to declare bankruptcy and have your homestead exempt. But that's not my point. Let's Let's say he hadn't declared bankruptcy for whatever reason. Would his homestead be protected? He didn't declare bankruptcy. He admitted he did it to hide money into a Florida homestead that went all the way to the Florida Supreme Court and they certified the question. They literally said, is it okay for someone with the intent to defraud creditors, they use that word, to take money that is not exempt from creditors that could be seized, it was in the bank, and then dump it into a Florida homestead? Yes. (laughs) So, The Florida Supreme Court said the homestead protection is that big, that you can take money that a creditor ordinarily could have taken. They didn't take it. You dump it into a Florida homestead. That's legal. Since then, though, the courts have said, hey, time out. 
Yes, as long as no one can prove that you didn't steal the money to buy the homestead. Subsequent cases have said if you stole the money to buy the homestead, your homestead can be taken. But in that case, there was no proof that he stole the money to buy it. See the distinction? Mm, interesting, interesting stuff. What else do we need to know about homesteads? What's the main the main thing is that you can see how important the protections are. That's why, again, re, not that long ago, right? Not that long ago, Carl Icahn and Donald Trump both homesteaded here because they wanted to. In in part, they it's been stated they've both admitted it. They didn't want to have to pay state income taxes in their respective New York, right? And they wanted to protect their homestead. Those really are the two main things. There's been a lot of case law on that. For example, what happens if what happens if you're over? Let's say you're in Cape Coral and you have a homestead. What if you're over half an acre? Right. What if you're on one acre in Cape Coral? Now, only a half acre is protected. Guess what? I've never seen a creditor do this, but theoretically they could order a sale of the homestead, but they only get the pro half the proceeds, you know, mm. because it's on a half acre. So those really are the two main homestead benefits. It's taxes and it's asset protection. And that is a huge deal. Some states have some asset protection when it comes to a homestead, but Florida has the strongest. And in fact, it's very, very liberally construed. Let me give an example. A case just came out recently. This was fascinating. A guy was claiming, okay, homestead exemption for what? For taxes, okay? Because remember, there's two prongs here. There's the taxes prong where you get a benefit. But that's a different benefit from asset protection. And there's two lines of cases based on that. On this guy wanted to save money on taxes, the tax collector sued, and what did the court say? This guy wanted to avoid paying a judgment, and he's claiming homestead. What did the court say? Okay, on th on the first prong where he didn't want to pay, ta he wanted lower taxes. A case just came out where a guy in this district too, our second district court of appeals that covers from Lakeland down to Naples, it's based in Lakeland. Okay. That's where the second district court of appeals, there's five district district court of appeals. The one that covers Fort Myers is based in Lakeland. And what he had is he had a regular, like a six bedroom home. He rented out rooms to his buddies. They all shared the living room. They all shared the kitchen. He was claiming full tax homestead benefit. He was renting a part of it. But there was one strap number, one tax ID number. There was no separate tax ID numbers, and he was renting out rooms to his buddies. He wanted the full homestead tax benefit. The tax collector said, no, you're only entitled for the tax benefit of where you live. The court said, no, time out. We're not going to sit here and try to divide out. Okay, so there's six rooms. You're only occupying one. Okay, so the one room, so you get one sixth homestead benefit. Not when there's a common area that you all share. To be distinguished from another case that came out a couple of years ago, this was similar to the duplex case. He was a four story building. He occupied one story. He rented out the three other stories. One strap number still, but the court said, hey, wait a minute. Those are clearly three different households, okay? We're going to divide that for a tax benefit up into four different portions. You're only entitled to homestead benefit for tax purposes on one floor. But you see the distinction they made. Mm -hmm. Common areas versus non-common areas. Seems arbitrary. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Courts do that all the time. Let me tell you what I've learned over the years. I even sent a letter to the Wall Street Journal recently about this on a case. They're probably not going to print it. Look, what I've learned, and I wish I'd known this before I went to law school, living and learning. Here's what most judges do, from the traffic court judge to the United States Supreme Court. They have an end in mind that they think is fair. That's what they do. We all operate. We're human beings. What we think is fair then what we do, we have an end in mind, what's fair? And then we look at laws 
and try to find a way to get there. Maybe cherry picking them from time to time and to rationalize. Precisely. And it all depends on interpretations of words and statutes. And once I find a way to get there, that's my decision. Why? Because I thought it was fair and I found a way to Mm -hmm. get there. Don't believe anybody who tells you that's not what most judges do. And that's what they did in this case. They right. think they thought it was fair and they found a way to get there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just fascinating. But homestead is a fascinating subject. It's not going away. And stay tuned because maybe we'll do a follow-up with some recent case law on homestead as more case law evolves. That would be uh, fascinating. I would love to do that. Now, Ned, you're teaching a course here or will be soon? I will be teaching a class here that I'm going to be creating on home Florida Homestead. And I'll be teaching that here. And when I have it ready, which I don't at the moment, when I have it ready, uh, I'm going to tell everybody about it. And we're going to explore this and further homestead issues. The best way sometimes to study something is look at the case law and there's so much of it. Mm. Yeah, if you're uh, listening in the future, which every one of you is, I'm sure, right? First of all, send me the stock picks. And second of all, the lottery. No, uh, what I what I want to let you know is we're recording in late June. So uh, whatever Ned comes out with for uh, instruction and opportunities to, to learn more in person will be uh, this summer or beyond. So we'll, uh, we'll be watching for that. And you can find out more information about that on DashboardMLS.com. DashboardMLS.com, indeed. Thank you, Jerry. This is the time of the show where we normally do our lightning round. We did that with Ned. The first time we had him on, uh, we talked about wire fraud in that episode. So uh, I would recommend you go back and listen to that. He's got some really strong uh, ideas about what's a great movie and TV show and even his favorite social media platform. So uh, be sure to do that. Ned, I want to thank you so much. How can people uh, reach out to you if they want to contact you? They can Google Ned Hale Attorney Fort Myers is the easiest. You just have to remember my name and my town and what I do. Or you can go to Ned, excuse me, HaleLawGroup.com. HaleLawGroup.com. Ned Hale. He's your man. Thank you so much, Ned. And I want to thank everyone else here at the Association for supporting our podcast. We love doing this. And we love bringing you all the information you need to become a successful realtor, home buyer, or home seller. I would ask that you check out our other podcast, Realtor Riff Rap, with host Nick Pagelis. And, of course, our YouTube video program, Realtor's Corner, with Joanna Rowell and Nick Pagelis. Check those out and subscribe. We would appreciate it. So on behalf of Jerry Johnson, our CEO of Beata Jones, and everyone here at our PCRA, I thank you and look forward to seeing you again the next time. Thanks for listening to the Royal Palmcast. Tune in again for more episodes and make sure to check out our sister podcast, Realtor Riff Rap, and our video news show, Realtor's Corner, which can be found on the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association Facebook page and YouTube channel. Sponsorship opportunities for these programs and more coming soon. So stay connected with RPCRA and stay tuned. This has been a production of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association.